You're still watching Ways. Now, World Kindness Day is a global day that promotes the importance of being kind to each other, to yourself and to the world. This day cele is celebrated on the 13th of November each year, and it helps everyone understand that compassion for others is what binds us all together. This understanding has the power to bridge the gap between nations and create a better world. I mean, this is very, very, very apt and important, right. kindness. I, I always say that if we just have a little bit of kindness yeah. in our heart for the next person, right, Nigeria will be, this world will be a better place. Nigeria, Lagos will be a better place. Yeah. Because we are so mean. Every little Vicious. opportunity you get as a leader or in a position of authority, you want yeah. to just... You know. Let's even leave people in authority. <laughs> Let's even leave authority. Mm. No, I'm people about, saying that. I'm talking yeah. about in your office. Exactly. Like in your office. If, you know, aside, in my house. Uh, yeah, so even aside authority, mm. just be kind even in traffic. So there's this thing I usually say is that mm -hmm. just be kind to everyone you meet because mm. the world already is a it's tough really cookie. Tough. Just adding meanness to it is an overkill. Mm -hmm. So you just... Be nice. You don't know what people are going through. True. Like, you don't know. You might be seeing someone, you know, smiling and going, but really, you don't know what you Deep can make down. or mar someone. Yeah, so just true. be kind, people, absolutely, please. Absolutely, absolutely. And that traffic was, like, a really big deal because usually I, I like, have road rage. So I'm working on myself to, like, be a, a lot more um, kind and considerate of people. So recently I was driving and then this guy, like, I let him get in front. He was fighting to get in. And then I was like, you know what? I can't fight you. Just get in. And then he got in. Guess what? Instead of a thank you, he flashed five fingers in front of me, like, boldly. Take it. I, I was like, <laughs> I love you, too. <laughs> that was just... The guy I, might be going through something. I, I'm telling you, you know, that was just what I was going like, through different absolutely things. Absolutely. Just, so just move on. Just do, find do the bit that you yes. can and just move yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so Iki, what did you find for us in the news? Okay, so uh, give me a sec. My news is actually from the punch and the informal workers. So we have a federation of informal workers organization of Nigeria. And they're really saying that the hike in petrol prices uh, is devastating more than COVID-19. So let me just read what the headline says. It says petrol hike, FDIS policy devastating Nigerians more than COVID-19. And, and the, the pain of the government is that they had promised, in fact, let me, let me take this extra. I say it's a shame and it remains an open sore that Nigeria, as an oil producing country, mm. could be importing fuel. Mm. And we believe that the Buhari administration has failed in this regard. Mm. And they're saying that while um, workers may probably receive half salary, the informal workers are not getting anything. You get, and this is affecting everything that they do. So you're talking about farmers, you're talking about, you know, those little people you pick on the road to help with construction and everything. It's just, it's just been a difficult time for everyone. And when I heard about the hiking, from I'm like, can they just make this working for home permanent? <laughs> I tell you. How can we just have lights? Because everything is just. And we're talking about food insecurity mm -hmm. today, so it's mm -hmm. just at that. I, I, I was, uh, I think it was Token Mark on Instagram, or was it Twitter, saying that she pays 30000 every week for electricity. So 30000 every week for what? a week. Yeah, sorry, every, is it every week now? Then for, she calculated it to 120000 for the week. Sorry, per day. Is then that on fuel or 20, on electricity? For, for, for the electricity, you know, because the tariffs have gone up. Yeah, the tariffs have gone up. So the, the price of electricity is really, really high, you know. So you now wow. add this to fuel sc wow. um, price. That's a lot. In fact, when I bought fuel today, and I had to reverse, I stood there. I was watching the meter. I'm sure the guy was wondering what's happening. I was looking at the meter, and I had to call my husband, please, if I buy this amount of fuel, <laughs> how many liters am I supposed to see on the meter? Yeah. My husband said, okay, okay. Well, when I looked at it, I said, okay, he didn't cheat me. Because the, the thing didn't move in my car. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I know that feeling. Very interesting. You know, I think one, the biggest hit, like one of the biggest hits that Nigerians got is after the COVID or during the COVID mm -hmm. when uh, the fuel price was reduced. And we were like, okay, uh, minus 20 naira. Well, that's mm -hmm. something. And then just a month or thereabout after, it's like to 150, 159, and now 159 to 160. We're like, come mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Like, give your citizens a break. It is well. 
<laughs> All right, so what did you find for us in the news, Anzi? Okay, so, well, I went into something not so serious uh, worldwide, but it's serious to two <laughs> sets of people. That's Toki Makiwa and her ex-husband, uh, Maji. So um, they, they had a lawsuit. Um, uh, Maji had uh, sued Toki uh, Makiwa for defamation of uh, character it, back when she released her book on be, uh, Becoming on becoming mm. uh, back in 2017. So he accused her, he said that she accused him of being a serial cheat mm. and uh, of having given her STD and all that. I mean, if you read the book. So now he said- Do you know read the book? <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me, please go on. <laughs> so he now said that she should recall all the books in circulation and give it back to him so he would burn it. And he won the case, one million, which is to be given to any orphan oh, of, any, of yeah. any NGO of his choice. Yeah. Yes, any NGO. Yes. So my my point here is, I just how realistic when you sue people? Do you sue people just to no, get but, at them, but, or how realistic? No, I don't think is he was to, trying to get. So if someone did things you what you want to do is remove the source of the defamation so i don't right, think yeah. that he was well, how, wrong how possible is that? so let's let's leave the possibility of it but that is i think he was it, he was in his right to ask for that i think he, that, that in fact when i saw the the fine for one millionaire i said that was very cheap that, that was eh? cheap. abroad you go and defame somebody <laughs> yeah. that one million convert it to dollars <laughs> that is what you'll be paying <laughs> or maybe 10 million dollars because Deformation of character is actually is a big serious, deal. You know why it's a big yeah. deal? Because there is nowhere Maji will go to that people will not look at him Link through the eye of too. that, you know, wife beater. Well, that's valid. This, that, I mean, wife cheats, blah, blah, blah. So he can lose certain kinds of control. And if you follow Maji carefully, mm. his, his work is with children. He does a lot of charity work. He does right. a lot of, you know, like uh, humanitarian work. Mm -hmm. So for somebody like that, now juxtapose that with the character that is being painted to it's be this, it's a, huge, hit it's on a him. huge dent on his image. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... So, what, so for me, if, if he won the case, I think it was within his rights if he feels that his character yeah. has been, the fame, you know, yeah. defamed to yeah. request that it be removed from the public. Okay, so mine is, would I call it lighter note or is a very con concerning note for me? Um, I, I think it was the MD of uh, Commodity, Commodity Exchange Commissions. Um, she was being interviewed by a panel you know, and, you know, they asked her what are the commodities that, you know, that's, I think she's, she was requesting, because I watched the full video, like, some days back, she was requesting for, um, what's it called, um, funds, she applied for funds, and so they were asking, okay, so what do you need the funds for, and all of that, you can't just come and tell us, you must break it down and everything, so the conversations now went further to asking, like, okay, so what's the price of, um, the commodities that she that she's supposed to supposedly overseeing, and she could not give you know a clear answer to say she said oh no that they send in daily um, daily numbers and all of that. The guy was now explaining to her that madam, you don't have to give me the exact figure of today, like the exact price for today as we're talking. You can give me a range. So maybe every maybe okay for the last one month it has been um, ranging around eight thousand per bag or something. She couldn't defend that. You know why I picked this story? Because we're talking about food security today. Commodity, you are supposed to be in charge of. So you should actually know. So when we, when we, when we are asking for things, or people are ask, um, the citizens are asking for things, you should be able to say, you know what? Yes, this thing is in the right because the, the, the prices of um, your food items are going up. So you should have it like at the back of your. She should have come prepared. She should have come prepared. She, she was flummoxed because she wasn't prepared. She. They, she was she was just taking on a word, but you have you have a no. But point you can't there. be taking you on a word for come to up anymore. No, no, I'm not supporting it. Yeah. I'm just telling you. I'm just reporting it as it is. No, I'm not. She she has no excuse. So don't think I'm trying to excuse her. Especially when you're coming to face the panel, you're supposed to you're come correct. Get to How would we even bring down the prices of commodity if the person that is in charge? <laughs> Of commodities does not know the current prices, well, so you can't really feel what the well, Nigerians I'm not are going to. <laughs> Nigerians, we are mostly infamous for uh, never being prepared to face the panel. Well, we have a long. A long... Our guest is prepared for us, <laughs> 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 but we are not here to attack her. The, the thing is, we we need to drive I can, conversations I can because feel, I, I think for me, it's just like when uh, former president. Um, Jonathan's wife was talking about cassava bread and, you know, when she was saying, like, uh, if they can't eat cake, let them, eat, I mean, if they can't eat bread, let them eat cake or something. Like, you were not in the reality of things. That's how I see it. Like, sometimes. That's the French Revolution. <laughs> okay. Well, that's how I see things. But you know what? We're going to take a break. When we return, we'll be speaking to our guests to discuss uh, food security in Nigeria. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.